every year, which tests thousands of the products that you rely on every day. And we've been doing it for over 60 years. Which reviews are 100% impartial. We don't accept freebies from manufacturers and we have no owners, shareholders or government departments to answer to. So our work is on behalf of you, the consumer. In a world of misleading claims and fake reviews, we test everything from everyday items to big purchases so that you don't have to. We then put them through tests and assessments that go beyond the accepted standard to work out how well these products work for you and what's not worth your money. And a Witch membership not only gets you access to our reviews, it also funds our non-profit campaigning work, like getting scam ads banned on social media and ending broadband and mobile mid-contract price hikes. And right now, podcast listeners can become a Witch member for 50% off the usual price by heading to witch.co.uk forward slash podcast offer. Hello, James Rowe here. This is a very busy week for podcasts here at Witch. Not only will you have your short and money episodes to listen to on Wednesday and Friday as usual, but hopefully you've managed to catch our Cars episode that we released on Monday, where I sat down with our motoring experts to debunk some of the biggest myths about electric vehicles. I learned a lot, and I'm sure you will too. Well, today, I've got something else new for you as well. This year, we've started to release podcasts that are exclusively available for our Witch members. And today, I'm going to share with you just a small snippet from our latest episode where I sat down with some of our tech experts. Did you know that in October this year, if you're a Windows user, you may well be forced into buying a new laptop because Microsoft is ending security support for Windows 10. That means it'll no longer be safe to use Windows 10 in most cases without being under threat from scammers and hackers. So to find out more about it, explore what this means for you, and to get advice on what to do if you're set to be impacted, I sat down with Witch Tech Editor Lisa Barber and our resident laptops expert Oliver Trebilcock to find out more. And here's a small section of our chat where they give us their advice on buying a new laptop. If you'd like to hear it in full, just hit the link in the show notes. It'll take you to the Witch website Site where you can become a witch member for 50% off the usual price. So going back to if you have a current machine that is operating on Windows 10 and it's not possible to upgrade it to Windows 11, I guess the next course of action would be to consider buying a new laptop. Should you buy a new one if that's the case for you? Uh, yes, you, you certainly should. And the good news is it's a great time to buy a new laptop as you'll see n- very noticeable differences uh, in the performance of your laptop, most likely, uh, when you get a new one. And this is all down to new a- AI technology that's coming in. You don't need to use it, but it means that the the hardware is a lot more powerful than it has been in the past in a lot of these new laptops. And you're, the main benefit you will see in a lot of them is much longer battery life. So um, 15 hour battery life between charges is pretty common now on many good laptops, especially many Best Buy, which laptops. I could feel like a lot of ears start to prick up as soon as you mention AI. Uh, how integral is that becoming into to new laptops? What What is it doing? How beneficial is it? You said you don't have to use these features, but can it be almost game-changing if you do end up using some of the features? Uh, I don't think we've seen any game-changing features yet. I'm looking at Lisa. Um, (laughs) But certainly there are certain things that look like they could be useful. There are things like automatic um, captions on videos. Um, If you're you're, um, hard of hearing and things like that, these can be very useful features. But you need higher-end laptops for features like that. We haven't seen any game-changing features yet, but certainly it's looking like they're going to be coming in. So it's only a matter of time. So it's good to get the hardware now that is capable of supporting these features and then reap the benefits as they come along or just reap the longer battery life and the additional benefits you get even if you don't use them from the better hardware. At some point, at some point, not quite yet, they will introduce a feature that none of us will be able to live without and will make our lives intrinsically easier. 
probably, but we're not there yet. I mean, there's been controversy over a Microsoft feature called Recall, which kind of captures everything you do in your PC. And the idea is that you can go, oh, remember those shoes that I was looking at? Take me to the website and it can take you there. But lots of people sort of fed back. They didn't like the privacy issues. Um, it, it can be switched off. It is opt in. Um, I think a lot of people are suspicious of AI. That's certainly kind of the impression I get from which members who get in contact with us. But at some point it will come along and it will be useful. But the thing to realize now that if you are buying, say, a Copilot Plus Windows PC that comes with um, hardware capability to run AI on the PC itself, you're getting a really powerful machine. And Copilot Plus, this is this the AI features that come with these Windows PCs? Is that what Copilot Plus is? No, that's the hardware requirement needed to run the AI. Ah, okay. I should add that it's very confusing what Microsoft's <laughs> done here, but Copilot Plus is completely separate from Copilot. Copilot is the is the voice assistant, the language language model that you you talk to, but the Copilot Plus is the hardware requirements, and you do not need a Copilot Plus laptop to use Copilot. It's very very confusing, but that's very similar names, very different features. Yes, they are very confusing, very confusing. I think people will be listening and hearing you talk, Oliver, and kind of know that you are our laptops expert, giving everything you're, you're telling us. What do we do here at Witch to test our laptops? How, how are we finding out what, what are the, the good ones on the market? So uh, we test things quite differently from a lot of other um, publications in that we have a dedicated lab with technicians who are looking at laptops all year round. So they're dab hands in knowing exactly what makes a good laptop, what doesn't. And that's that's all that they do. So um, that is that is one key key difference. And so when you see laptops advertised by brands, there's there's so much focus on the specifications of a laptop. Things like how many gigs of RAM it has, how much storage it has. But there's so many other things that make a really good laptop. And if any one of these things isn't quite right, then it can really put you off using a laptop. So. It's, it's really important that all these things are covered. So what, the way we do it is um, an often overlooked aspect is the ergonomics, the, the keyboards, uh, the trackpad, the general ease of use of the laptop. And so this is actually the part that makes up our, the largest proportion of our score. It actually makes up 30% of our product score. And then speed and performance, which is what most people focus on. You'll see lots of benchmarks on YouTube and things like that. That makes up just below that. We, we weight that 27.5%. We're very specific, very specific on these things. <laughs> yeah. And that's followed by a screen and sound quality at 22.5%. So that, that makes up most of the test score. And then we factor in things like battery life and how portable the laptop is as well. So it's all round a really um, good piece of kit and isn't going to hold you back and isn't going to slow down within a few years or, or be something you really regret purchasing later. Yeah, I think for me at least, and I feel like there's going to be a lot of people who uh, who would agree with me when the, you know, if they've been looking for a new laptop, they might just look at the size and the storage and think, oh, well, there's some good numbers and the price looks okay. I'll jump at that. But what you're telling me here is that there's so many other considerations that we here at which we do take into consideration because it isn't just the size and the price and the storage. That Those aren't the things that only matter, right? Uh, no, it's it's lots of other things. It's, it's the whole aspects of it. And the, the other important thing from which is uh, um, we don't take lovely free samples from manufacturers. Uh, we buy all the laptops ourselves from retailers just like a consumer would. So uh, we're truly independent in that regard. And we, we can say things how it is and we don't, we don't worry what the brands say about that. And also that we test more than 100 laptops a year. So we've tested the whole market. We know exactly which ones are good, which ones are bad, and we haven't missed anything out. So um, you can be sure that when we recommend a laptop, it very much is one of the best on the market. So um, it, it's, it's really good from that perspective. And also, when you're getting your laptop, it, it, it will what's great for you will really depend on how you intend to use it. And so if you move around a lot, then obviously portability will be more important and great battery life. If you're mainly using it at home, uh, then um, you would probably want to prioritize speed and a large screen and our um, reviews take all that into account so we're not punishing any of those aspects and so you'll be able to get a great recommendation whatever type of laptop is best for you. Oliver, there's so much there that you obviously have to then consider when buying a laptop, not just the size and the storage that, that I've been doing <laughs> in my life. What is the best approach to actually going and buying a new laptop? Well, the great thing about our reviews is that if we're recommended a laptop, you know you can buy with confidence. Mm. 
it's it's instead of having to go and try something out in the shop, which people rarely do nowadays, you can look online for the absolute best prices of the laptops that you're interested in and know that you're going to get a really good machine. And sticking with this point about buying a new one, because this is going to have to be an option for a lot of people who are in this circumstance. Do you absolutely have to buy a new one? It depends. If you, if you're if you want to stick with Windows, but your computer doesn't have the specs that let you upgrade, then yes, you do. I mean, alternatives you can consider. You could switch to a free operating system, um, Linux. If you use Ubuntu or Mint, they're really good ones. If you're very used to Windows, and that's absolutely free, and they really don't need high specs to run them. That's why you'll be able to put them on your computer. Um, there's also Google Chrome OS Flex. That's for laptops only. You have to be really comfortable using apps and working online to do that. But that's another way to get more life out of an old machine and they'll be secure. So if you did go down the route of buying a new one then, how much, give me some ballpark figures, Oliver, I'm looking at you now because I feel like you've got the numbers in front of you. Ballpark, how much are you going to, be expecting to, to spend? So you do need to be realistic in terms of pricing. Laptops are not cheap, um, but you certainly don't need to spend a grand or more um, like many, many Mac owners do, unless you want to own a Mac, of course. We wouldn't recommend going much below around £600 on a new one if you want it to last, um, although that we do review the odd one that is good below that price. But so that's that's sort of the ballpark figure um, is one to look at. But laptops, depending on the features you want, they can get very expensive. So it's all about finding that compromise between what you want, paying for what you want, and not paying for things you don't need. And what about buying used? Is that is that an, a decent enough option for, for buying a, a, a new laptop for yourself? Would you consider buying something that's pre-owned? Uh, you could do, although for laptops you generally don't need to do that. We do recommend doing that quite often with MacBooks. For laptops, you could buy used, but you need to be very, very careful that it meets the Windows 11 requirements if you do that. So you would be talking about a laptop that's two, three, four years old at most, um, and you can get good new laptops for reasonably low prices, so only if you're on a really tight budget. If, you, if, you, if £600 is nowhere near your price range, uh, then do consider used if you need a more powerful machine, but do be careful. Look for reputable retailers as well, um, making sure you're getting that warranty. I mean, I, w- I would avoid buying anything on a marketplace. Um, it's just, yeah, I, I wouldn't do that myself. I wouldn't recommend that anyone does that. So look for a reputable retailer and you should be fine. The, the key thing to look for is refurbished rather than just secondhand. So if you get a re- one that says refurbished, it will say certified refurbished. You can, uh, retailers like Curry's will do a refurbished ones um, and lots of other retailers, or you can have refurbished. Um, retailers like back market um, that means that they've checked it they've they've done some tests on it and they're not just bringing in the machine and then selling it on so I would I would always look for refurbished and that will give you an extra degree of confidence when you're buying secondhand there we go then that's all I can play for you right now if you want to hear the full thing where we explore this topic in greater detail and most importantly where Oliver and Lisa share some which best buy laptops that we recommend you should buy just click the link in the show notes there you'll be able to become a which member for 50% off the usual price and listen to the podcast in full there's plenty of other benefits that come from a which membership depending on which tier you choose you could get access to all of our product reviews our app every issue of the magazine delivered to you across the year and the Ask Which service for one-to-one personalised buying advice. Uh, There's more podcasts coming your way this week with Which Shorts on Wednesday and Which Money on Friday. Plus, we released an episode of Which Cars earlier in the week. If you've got any thoughts, comments, questions or anything in between, simply drop us an email to podcasts at which.co.uk. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Leaking roof? Car won't start? Needs to renovate? Here's what to look for when getting a trader to help. A recognized endorsement, where expert assessors set the bar high. Genuine customer reviews, so you don't get duped by cowboy fakers. A clear code of conduct, to give you an extra layer of security. A robust complaints policy, so you can resolve disputes fairly. And the witch trusted trader badge that says, choose me with confidence. You can trust Witch to help you find the right traders for the job. 
We run thorough checks on traders, put them through in-depth assessments, then we give them the actions to make improvements and only endorse them when they've actioned them and made the grade. So to choose with confidence, head to which.co.uk forward slash traders or search for which trusted traders.